Yeah, so for whole, for practice exam four, uh, question five, they give us five different solutions and they ask which one is gonna have the lowest vapor pressure. So all solutions have the same molality. So that removes one part of this calculation. They're all one mole out. And then I've got some methanol. I've got some acetic acid. I've got uh, some ethanol and I've got some sodium chloride and I have some sodium sulfate. So first, this is a little bit tricky because they ask for lowest vapor pressure and we know that vapor pressure is inversely related to your boiling point. So a lower vapor pressure means we're gonna have a higher boiling point. So that's the first thing to write out. Okay, I'm looking for the solution that has the highest boiling point. The highest boiling point means I'll have the lowest vapor pressure, right? The vapor pressure is, you know, how much of your solution is already in the vapor phase over the solution. So. If you have a lot of your solution already in the gas phase, it has a high vapor pressure, but that also means it's going to be easy to boil that sample because a lot of it's already in the gas phase. Whereas if you have a, a low amount of your solution, a small amount of your solution in the vapor phase, right, a low vapor pressure, that means it's going to be harder to take your sample from the liquid phase into the gas phase, higher than boiling point. So I'm looking for the solution with the highest boiling point, right? Delta TB equals our Van Hoff factor KB times molality. These are all aqueous solutions. So my change in my boiling point equals my Van Hoff factor, my boiling point constant, 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal times my molality. All of these have a one molal solution. So really, right? We can ignore molality, we can ignore our boiling point constant and just focus on Van Hoff factor, right? My Van Hoff factor, for any molecular compound, my Van Hoff factor is one. So ethanol and methanol have a Van Hoff factor of one. Acetic acid, it ionizes a little bit. We could call it one, we could call it two. It's not gonna change the answer here. Sodium chloride, also has a Van Hoff factor of two. When we get down here to sodium sulfate, however, sodium sulfate is gonna break up into two sodiums and one sulfate. So it has a Van Hoff factor of three. I'm gonna have the largest value of I. Everything else is the same for all of these calculations. So really the only thing that's gonna differentiate the boiling point for these will be my Van Hoff factor. The largest Van Hoff factor is going to correspond to the greatest change in boiling point. So sodium sulfate should have the highest boiling point, that aqueous solution. And because it has the highest boiling point, it would have the lowest vapor pressure of those solutions. And I misspoke, my, my boiling point constant is not 1.86, that's my freezing point uh, constant. The other one's like 0.5, um, two. All right, for the next question, question eight. All right, lactose is a sugar. Um, so lactose has a Van Hoff factor equal to one and it asks our freezing point. So my Delta TF equals my Van Hoff factor, freezing point constant times my molality. So my change in freezing point equals my Van Hoff factor is one for lactose. It's a molecular compound times my freezing point constant, there's the 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. And then the molality of this solution is 0.3 molal. We multiply everything together, molality cancels out. 
And I'm going to get a change in freezing point of, I didn't grab my calculator, 1.86 times 0.3, whatever that is. Don't worry about grabbing your calculator, Matt. I'll 1.86 times 0.3. So I get a change in freezing point of about 0.558. So my freezing point is going to be like negative um, 0.558 degrees Celsius for this question. Question eight. Let's see, question nine. Pretty sure, I think we did question nine in class. All right, question nine, the aqueous solutions in order of decreasing freezing point so i have a one molal they're all the same 0.1 molal solution ethanol all right is a molecular compound nacl is ionic and calcium nitrate so this is gonna be much like the first question we did. And absolutely, you're gonna to have to know how to answer a question like this. Um, so again, right, delta TF equals negative Van Hoff factor KF times our molality. Our molality is the same for all of these. It's 0.1, our freezing point constant is the same for all of these. Um, it's 1.86, so really, the only thing that's going to separate these is our Van Hoff factor. So my Van Hoff factor for ethanol is one. It's a molecular compound. Sodium chloride is going to break up into a sodium and a chloride that are separate. So Van Hoff factor is two. And then the calcium nitrate, nitrate, the Van Hoff factor is three. Um, because they're all aqueous solutions, right? So the, the freezing point constant is for water. Um, so they're all in water. So they're all gonna have the same freezing point constant. So the only thing that's gonna separate them is the Van Hoff factor. So decreasing boiling point. So I want highest, closest to zero. So yeah, they're basically already in that order. So this would be, um, you know, this is the closest to zero. So I would list them, you know, A, B, C in that order. Um, this is the highest. And this would be the lowest freezing point because it has the largest Van Hoff factor. Yeah, for question eight, you know, they didn't give us the structure, so you, you just kind of had to either look it up um, to figure out that the Van Hoff factor for lactose is one. They gave you everything else, multiplied all that together to get the uh, ultimate freezing point for that question for question eight.